yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hi everyone, it's Sam. Today, we'll have the second part of the in-depth Paladin guide for Ragnarok Mobile. If you haven't yet seen the first video, I highly recommend you check it out first from the link in the description below. In this video, we will talk more about the pros and cons of the different Paladin builds followed by the recommended equipments and corresponding cards. There are three popular Paladin builds currently, Shield Build, Holy Build, and Tank Build. Out of the three builds, Shield Build is usually more recommended in general situation. This build is capable of grinding effectively using Shield Chain and Shield Boomerang while also being a decent tank. These are the pros and cons. They are able to use converters to increase damage. This means more selection in grinding areas. Shield skills are range, so you can kill enemies before other melee characters can do go near it. The main stat needed is focus on strength. Thus, you can add vitality later to become a semi-tank. It is also great at PvP depending on your skill distribution. The cons however is that Shield Chain has high SP consumption while generally having no instats to help reduce the SP consumption burden. The next build is the Holy Build, which is personally my favorite build due to Ragnarok anime a long time ago. Using Holy Cross and Grand Cross as main damage dealing skill, below are the pros and cons. It is a Holy Element skill, and Glassheim is a good high level farming spot composed mostly of undead and shadow monsters. It's also effective but costly AoE skill using Grand Cross. Intelligence can also increase your damage, which means higher SP and SP region. The cons, however, includes limited grinding spots to undead and shadow mobs. Harder to distribute stats since it is split between strength and intelligence, then you also need to think on vitality and dex while on it. Grand Cross, although very effective, cannot be done at full auto unless very geared. The last build is going to be the ultimate tank, with high vitality and intelligence and using shield boomerang as main grinding skill. As mentioned in the previous guide, avoid doing it right at the start and instead, get Emir's book to switch freely between this tank build and a grinding build. The pros include low SP consumption for shield boomerang, it is a great tank even with cheap gears, great asset at ET, and effective sacrifice skill in PvP. The cons however includes inefficient grinding since the 4 second CD counts in stamina consumption. Shield boomerang also miss a lot with low dexterity. The fourth build is also available as an Aji type Sadder. This is very popular in the original Ragnarok Online due to not needing much SP consumption for grinding. However, with the advent of foods in Ragnarok Mobile, SP is no longer much of a problem. Thus, this build is currently no longer recommended. With that discussed already, I hope you are able to decide which build you want to go. We can then proceed on which are the recommended equipments for Paladins. Note however that this is only a guide and different equipments have different situation it is best used for. There are two different weapon types that a crusader can use, sword and spear. Sword users has an advantage with medium sized monster, and most normal mobs are medium type. But its most important advantage lies to the fact that sword mastery is a swordsman skill. Thus, you can save those 10 precious skill points on your crusader skill tree. Spear users, on the other hand, have an advantage and generally higher weapon attack and great extra effects. Holy type builds are also required to use spear weapons to maximize holy and grand cross damage. These are the good swords for paladins. Handai Gum is a cheap sword and all around good for grinding due to its increased attack and additional strength. Holy Avenger has high attack sword with great benefits when using sacrifice skill. However, it is a bit expensive. For spear weapons, Ivory Lance is still considered to be the top tier and generally good for PvE and PvP. It is also cheap and have high base attack with ignore defense. Cardo Lance is another spear best used for tanking with additional vitality stats and increased defense and magic defense. Lance is a cheap weapon for holy type users that increase holy and grand cross damage. However, if you have the budget, 
go for a spearfish instead, which is the best weapon for holy type users. Longhorn is a free holy element converter for shield users. Same with all other classes, use elemental, race, and size card on your weapon. Note however that for shield build, using elemental cards are better since it works on shield boomerang. Holy builds on the other hand is the opposite, since a card that increases damage on demon, shadow, and undead race or element either requires boss card or currently non-existent, thus use size card instead. For tanking, go with meta and egg card for increased HP. The second most important, if not the most important equipment that defines a paladin class is his shield. True paladins usually have several shields ready depending on situation. The following are recommended. Imperial Guard is overall great shield for tanking and general grinding. Mirror Shield is best shield for grinding on shield build due to increased damage on shield chain and shield boomerang skill. However, it comes with heavy SP cost. On the other hand, Nagan Shield is best shield for holy type users. Sacred Shield is alternate good shield for tanking later on endgame. When paired with Legion Armor, it increased healing received by a whooping 20%. Static Shield is another great shield for tanking, especially on higher end MVPs, since most of the time, high end MVPs will kill you due to their spells and not due to their physical attack. Stone Buckler is an optional shield useful for large MVPs. Shield cards are actually pretty expensive, so it is a less priority. However, if you have the budget, go with racial reduction cards and keep Mark card as backup if need arises. Moving on, we go to the different armors. Tights is a cheap alternative armor that increases your attack during early game. Gobine's armor is generally the go-to armor for paladins. You can never go wrong with this equipment and its set effect. Legion armor is another good armor for paladins. Paired with Sacred Mission, it is one of the best armors in-game, but comes with a hefty price tag. Use elemental reduction cards for the armors. As a tank, you will need it more than any other class. Peko Peko card is another alternative, but not as good as elemental card for tanking. The next one is Robe. Gubine's Polder is generally the go-to robe which can be upgraded to Duff's Cape, which is one of the best robe in-game. Ancient Cape is another good robe for grinding and PvP. Staunch Cape is also great for tanking neutral mobs in ET. Upgrade it to Mana Mantu and pair it with High Fashion Sandals for improved magic reduction. Rydic Card is currently the best card for your garment. For Shoes, Greaves is a cheap shoes for general usage. Gobine's Grieve is very good also for the set effect. High Fashion Sandals is good for to increase magic reduction together with Mana Mantu. Rune Shoes is great to use to pair with Legion and Sacred Mission if you don't wanna die and stack that healing percentage. Then slot your selected shoes with Ferus card. For accessories, Vitality Necklace is good for general tanking and increased damage and shield boomerang. Strength Ring is a general good accessory for everyday grinding. The bonus attack when upgraded to Powerful Ring is also a lot. Stunch Ring is also great when doing the Undying build by stacking your HP recovery on heavy skill. Currently, only Spore card is considered to be very useful for tanking. Lastly, for headgears, I don't really want to suggest anything since from time immemorial, headgears are sacred equipment in showing off your character's individualness. Not to mention that the free gacha headwear you get every month is most of the time better than the current in-game ones. Anyway, if you are running Gobine set, do go with Gobine's helm, but don't forget to hide your helmet from the menu cause seriously, it looks sucks. Use nightmare card with it. And that's it for this video, be sure to wait for the last part of this guide. So stay tuned and hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. Happy gaming!